Hey guys, Chandler here, back on my channel, Alternate Journey, and today in this video, as you can tell by the title, I am going to be discussing about all the different types of top surgeries that a trans or non-binary individual can choose from. Just a disclaimer, this is probably not all the top surgeries, these are like the most common ones. What, there's like seven total that I'm going to be explaining here today. These are all the top surgeries that I know of. Of course, there are doctors all around the world doing different techniques and creating new surgeries all the time and everything in order to get the results that certain individuals want and stuff and also some surgeons will do a mixture of certain surgeries and stuff because after all each individual is its own separate case and depending on the results that that individual wants. Um, all the images and animations that I'm going to be uh, showing in this video are provided by Dr. Scott Mosser who is a surgeon in San Francisco. I will be linking his channel down below. Um, definitely check it out. He has videos of animated and live surgeries of all these different types of top surgeries. Um, he also has this hour-long seminar video on his channel where he talks about achieving a non-binary look. Yeah. Anyways, let's just dive right into it because I have a lot of information to throw at you guys today, obviously. Uh, these are all the different types of top surgeries that I'm going to be discussing today. I will link down timestamps below in the description just in case you want to skip to a certain surgery that you were most interested in getting or a surgery that you never heard of and just want to skip right to it. So in medical terms, top surgery is a subcutaneous uh, mastectomy. Basically the goal is not just to have a flatter chest but also to have an aesthetically pleasing male contour as well. And also it's very important to some individuals for full sensation of the nipple areolar complex, basically the nipple, and also minimal scarring is very important to most individuals, especially those uh, identify as a trans man, because obviously they want the male contouring to identify with the body that they were supposed to be, and also to pass well in public with minimal scarring. Surgery includes the removal of most of the breast tissue, uh, removal of excess skin, removal of the inframary fold, which is basically where the breast and chest meet, so basically that hangover basically type situation, I don't know, uh, depends on an individual's chest size, and then also the reduction and repositioning of the nipple if necessary slash wanted. Okay, so I'm just going to go over the three basic ones that everyone knows first. So first, double incision. This is the most widely known top surgery that everyone thinks about probably because when you type in like trans man and top surgeries and stuff, these are the immediate uh, Google images that you will see. This t surgery is ideal for people with medium to large chested. So with every double incision, there is two horizontal incisions one on top of the pectoral muscle, and then usually at the bottom of the pectoral muscle. But depending on where you want to position your scars and the shape of your scars, and also depending on the size of your chest, some surgeons will actually just make the second incision on the bottom of the inframary fold, so where the tissue meets the chest. The skin is then pulled back and tissue is then removed. Uh, liposuction may be performed for a more masculine contour and also to decrease the chance of dog ears. Dog ears is like excess skin on the side. This usually happens to larger chested individuals because surgery can only do so much, but then you can always get revisions to remove that excess skin. Some surgeons don't like to do it right away and everything just in case you won't have dog ears and stuff, so they, they'll they rather do minimal scarring rather than do a full-on long-ass scar in order to remove the dog ears without even knowing if like you were going to develop dog ears. Sometimes they can't tell within that situation right then and there. Nipples are also removed and they are resized then grafted. Basically meaning whenever you hear grafted nipples, that means that your whole nipple areola complex was ripped out. Every time when I'm mentioning resizing of the nipple, by the way, most surgeons resize the nipple to the average size of a male nipple, which is 22 millimeters, just to let you guys know. But of course, if you do not want to resize your nipples, you think that your nipples are fine and stuff like that, you can opt out from doing that. The nipple is then placed back onto the body where you want them, slash where the surgeon thinks will be best for the most masculine look. Unfortunately, with this type of surgery, you will lose, if not all, of sensation to your nipples. But this surgery is best for having the most male-like contour and flat chestedness. Next is keyhole. 
Keyhole is mainly ideal for people with small chests and um, good elasticity within their skin. With keyhole surgery, an incision is made along the bottom of the areola, which if you do not know what I mean by areola, a lot of people just think that areola is another name for nipple. It kind of is, but your nipple is actually like the nipple that actually pokes out. Areola is the skin around the actual nipple, just in case you guys get confused with what I'm talking about here. At the bottom of the areola, there's an incision, and basically the tissue will be removed with liposuction, through that incision, and then after that, it just gets sewn up. This is very ideal for people who want minimal scarring. Um, unfortunately, it's only available for people with smaller chests. Sometimes, if you're on like the range of having like what, like a B cup, you can get it, but there is higher percentage chance that you will have to get revisions. Pros are of this surgery is minimal scarring, and also you will have sensation of your nipple because you are only um, cutting the bottom of the areola, you're actually not separating any of the nerves from the nipple. Um, the cons is that it doesn't always remove the inframary fold. So it may still look like you have some tissue and everything like that, or some bumps and stuff, and also it doesn't resize the nipple. Next is periareola. Periareola, a lot of people confuse with keyhole because it is kind of like the same thing. Also, a lot of doctors, when they say that they offer double incision and keyhole, typically they mean that they offer double incision, keyhole, and periareola. Periareola is very similar to keyhole. Um, it's ideal for small chested individuals and B sized individuals as well. There's a circular incision made around the nipple to make it the size of an average male nipple, 22 millimeters, and then around that, is another larger circular incision creating basically a ring. That ring, or donut of skin if you will, is removed and then basically thrown away. With that ring of tissue exposed, liposuction is done to remove that tissue. Then a drawstring technique is used to close the incision. The nipple is usually intact for this surgery, although some surgeons will actually remove the nipple in order to resize it. It depends on the surgeon, their experiences, and the techniques that they use. So depending on your surgeon, your nipple could be fully intact where you will still have sensation to your nipple or they will actually do the cookie cutter technique where they actually remove your nipple in order to resize it and then put it back on and do the drawstring technique and everything like that. So it depends on your surgeon and also what you prefer as well. But this surgery is also awesome because like it's minimal scarring, it's just a scar just around your nipple. So, once healed, it's very not noticeable. Alright, so now going into the surgeries that not a lot of people know about or a lot of people don't really talk about because not a lot of people get them. When a lot of people hear about top surgery, they just think about those three options, but in reality, there are four more. Three of them are kind of similar, but with different techniques, therefore it's a different surgery. Alright, so first, inverted T or T anchor top surgery. This is ideal for people with a medium to large chest. Uh, who wish to retain most sensation as possible to their nipple. I say this because sometimes you won't. It depends on your body, how you heal, and also the techniques of the surgeon, of course. So this surgery is similar to double incision top surgery. Two incisions are made top and bottom of the pectoral muscle. But the difference with this surgery is mainly around nipple areola complex area. I'm just gonna, by the way, I'm just gonna say NAC now because like, that's such a mouthful. So the NAC is reduced in size and repositioned with an extra vertical incision from the bottom of the areola to the horizontal bottom incision. The nerves and the blood supply to that nipple is never separated, therefore the NAC retains a sensation. Also with this surgery it has potential for less complications because the nipple itself is not actually removed. So therefore there's um, less chances of infections and loss of the nipple. So kind of with the inverted T, it kind of does look like a T, but for me when the surgery is actually done it kind of looks like the, sur the surgeon kind of made a triangle aspect to remove as most tissue as possible and then kind of like sewed it all together. This helps with also a lot of room for rep repositioning of the nipple with actually the nerves being still intact but this also does depend on the elasticity of your skin. The surgeon will tell you if you have really good skin for this surgery. Next is buttonhole technique top surgery. This surgery is mainly ideal for people with larger chests and this is also similar to the double incision top surgery. 
So instead of the free nipple grafts, meaning ripping off your nipples and putting them on a table, resizing them and grafting them back on, the NAC is resized and left attached so it still has blood supply and the nerves so you can actually have sensation after surgery. This is achieved through a thin dermal pedicle. So basically they would make the same incisions of a double incision top surgery at both the top and bottom of the pectoral muscle. Through this though, they will basically kind of cut into your chest. But yeah, they still cut it so like some of the tissue will be in this fold to preserve as much nerves to the nipple as possible. And they will remove the tissue from here. Basically, this fold with the NIC is brought underneath the skin from the top incision. And then, and then a small circular incision is made where the nipple will be exposed. That thin layer of skin will then be removed and then the nipple will be exposed. Kind of like a button through a buttonhole. That is why it is called the buttonhole technique. Yeah, and then just sew it on right there just to secure the skin around the NAC. This surgery helps avoid the extra incision made by the inverted T surgery. And then next is fish mouth surgery. Fish mouth was one of those surgeries that I've never heard of until like I was doing a lot of research um, deciding which type of top surgery I was going to get. Uh, fish mouth is usually done by non-binary individuals because it is a surgery that has results that is not feminine or masculine. It's very non-gendered kind of, but basically the final scar is located in the midsection of the chest and then the nipple will be in the middle of those incision scars. So just like double incision top surgery, two inc incisions are made, um, but the top incision is going to be done a little bit higher up than the normal double incision scars. And then a bridge of tissue is is marked running from the top to the bottom of those two horizontal incision lines. This will help remain blood supply and nerve sensation to the NAC. This is known as a bipactical bridge or flap, kind of like with the buttonhole technique. The outer skin is removed from this bridge, if you will, and then while the nipple is still intact to the tissue in the center. The tissue exposed from this uh, bridge flap situation is then removed also underneath that flap as well. The skin edges are then folded causing the skin to fold underneath the incision. The skin over the areola is marked and then the skin outside is then removed just like the buttonhole technique and then they sewed on the the skin around the NAC just to intact that skin and everything. So it's very similar to the buttonhole technique only it's just the scars are going to be in the midsection of the chest to create more of a non-binary look. The scars typically after healing is larger than any of these surgeries just because there's a larger incision area. And then last but not least, uh, the minimal scar top surgery technique. So this is ideal for small chested individuals but also you have to have excellent skin elasticity. I don't really know how to um, test for skin elasticity um, your doctor will basically be able to tell you if you have good skin elasticity and if they think that you will not have to need any revisions from your surgery. So small incisions are made from the side of the chest and then a small incision, not full like the keyhole, but a small little partway incision, the bottom of the areola. And then liposuction basically removes tissues from both incisions on the side and from the areola. And then yeah, that's it. This leaves nearly invisible scars once you are done healing because it's very small, maybe like one inch incisions and you have full sensation to your nipple. So yeah, that's like the most ideal. I would love to get this surgery. Unfortunately, I am not qualified for this surgery and everything, but yeah. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I threw a lot of information at you guys. I thought it would be a, a good idea to make this video because not a lot of people talk about all these different types of top surgeries. And I know it is hard to do research and everything. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope these videos help. Definitely check out Dr. Scott Monster's channel to watch the full animations of these surgeries. Also, he has some live surgeries if you are okay with blood and everything so you can really know what's going on. And then also he has, yeah, a lot of like seminars where he answers typical trans questions and helps with non-binary patients as well. So yeah, anyways, please like, comment, and subscribe. And definitely check out all my other videos as well. I make videos whenever I can, but you can always expect important updates on my transition. Alright, see you guys.